Okay, getting into the next section. Now, in the first section, all we talked about was indefinite integrals. There is a such thing as a definite integral. However, the definition of a definite integral has to do with the area, okay? So before we can talk about that definite integral, we must get into um, the notation for finding areas, okay? Um, so in this section, you're going to be finding the areas underneath curves. But before that, we have to get into what's called um, summations. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is sigma notation. So sigma notation is the sum of an n number of terms. So one term, second term, third term, all the way to the nth term, okay? So if n is 10, then you've got 10 terms. If n is 100, you've got 100 terms, so on and so forth, okay? And this is just the notation to represent each individual term. So instead of writing the first term plus the second term plus the third term all the way to whatever this term is, right? It could be the 10th, it could be the 100th. You're not gonna sit here and write all 100 terms out with plus signs in between them. So there's a shorter way to write it. You can write it using what's called sigma notation where you have a formula to find every single one of these values, okay? And the way you find that is by plugging in one into this formula, and that'll give you the first term. You plug in two into the formula, that'll give you the second term. All the way, and you keep going and keep going and keep going until you get to this number, which is the certain number of terms that you're looking for, okay? Um, I is called the index. It's where the terms start at. So you start with the first term or the second term, depending on what number that starts at. E is called the summation. It just means you're gonna add up all the terms together. And then one and N are called the bounds. So you start at one, plugging in one, two, three, four, and then you stop when you get to this number here, okay? So this theorem is a summation formulas theorem. So it tells you that if you're taking the summation of a constant from one to n, since there's nowhere to plug in the i value, every single time you try to plug in one, you're just gonna get c. When you try to plug in two, you're gonna get that same constant. When you try to plug in three, you're gonna get that same constant. So you're just gonna end up with the constant plus the constant plus the constant plus the constant. How many of them? N number of them. And instead of adding 10 of them together, you can just say 10 times that constant. So, in, <coughs> excuse me, instead of adding n number of them together, you can just say that constant times that n. Now, these are a little bit more complicated to explain, so I'm gonna leave that out. If you wanna look at the proofs, they'll be inside the, um, the ebook. But for here, if you're taking the summation of i, that means when you plug in one, you get one. When you plug in two, you get two. When you plug in three, you get three, so on and so forth, all the way until you plug in one. So that means you end up with one plus two plus three plus four plus dot 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 plus n at the end. If I were to combine all of those together, um, you would end up with this expression, okay? I squared, very similar. I would, my first term would be one, my second term would be four, my third term would be nine, so on and so forth. And if I were to combine them all together, I would end up with this expression. Similarly for I cubed, you'd end up with this. And then if you have more than one term and constants in the front, you can take the constants outside. As long as this constant does not have that variable I in it, you can take that constant out and just work with the summation of the function that does have the I. And similarly, if there are multiple terms, you can split it up into each term, okay? Um, so the first problem here says find the sum of this. So to do that, since it's not all the way to 100 or anything like that, we can just work it. Now notice that here they used i as the index. And notice here they used k as the index. It's what's called a dummy variable. You can use any variable you want here. You can use an i, you can use a k, you can use an x, you can use whatever variable you want, okay? Um, so here they chose to use k which means every single time I'm gonna be plugging these numbers into k. So first I'm gonna start with three. I'm gonna plug in three for k plus because it is a summation. Then I'm next number after three is four. So I'm gonna plug in four for k. 
Then I'm going to plug in 5 for k. Then I'm going to plug in 6 for k. And I am not going to plug in 7 because it says to stop at 6. So I'm just going to compute this. So I end up with 3 over 5 plus 4 over 6 plus 5 over 7 plus 6 over 8. And that I can type in the calculator. So let's go ahead and go here. 3 over 5 plus, you could reduce 4 over 6 if you want to, but since I'm using the calculator, I don't necessarily need to. The calculator will reduce 4 over 6 and 6 over 8 for me. Um, put it in its fraction form, and we get 1147 over 420. And this is the summation. Now, for example two, here we have, we want to go in the reverse. So they want me to use sigma notation to write this sum. So I know I'm going to have the sigma notation. And I need to figure out what the formula is and then what my bounds are. And I can use whatever variable I want. If I want to use I, I can use I. If I want to use K, I can use K. I think another one I've seen them use is in. But I don't like to use in because these are, are have ins, being that this number is an in. So I'm going to go ahead and just stick with K, like the last example, or I. So notice that in every single one of these fractions, the 3 is consistently the same in the numerator. Also, in each of one of those denominators, you're adding 2 consistently. What is changing is the number that's being added to 2. So that's where my K is going to go. And what is the first number that gets plugged in for K? 1. What is the last number that gets plugged in to K for K? That's 11. So this is that sum written out in sigma notation. Remember, you can use K or you can use I. Either way, it'll be the same answer, okay? They're both correct. These usually use I's. But if I change that to a K and that to a K, it's the same formula, okay?